What is going on, fellow home haunters? So if you've seen my zombie containment chamber, you know that the prop is activated by an infrared motion detector, and I wanted to do something that was a little more interactive and be able to trigger the prop when I wanted to. But uh, why just make a simple trigger, right? So uh, in typical fashion, I, I like to overcomplicate things and uh, make things that are very intricate. So. I'm really busy with work still this year, so I figured I would just focus on one thing but make it a little bit more elaborate. So I'm going to create a control panel that allows you to be a little more interactive with the prop, maybe um, push different buttons to, to uh, have different sound effects go off, maybe some fog machine go off or to, to simulate steam, maybe some actuators to move some parts of the chamber around. I'm not sure yet, but this is what I came up with. And I'm just using a program called Graphic. It's on a Mac. And I really like this program. It's so easy to use. You can add drop shadows and uh, lighting effects and gradients. And um, it's just really simple to use. You can see I came up with six small control panels. Each one does something different and has a different theme. Some buttons will play sound. Some buttons will actually start the prop. Some buttons might open an actuator or set off a fog machine. Not totally sure yet, but that's the concept. And I wanted to do like some LED lighting or neon lighting around each individual control panel just to really make it pop and look cool at night. And I'm not sure if I want to stay with like a grunge effect. Um, I'm kind of leaning toward a more modern effect and keeping it all pristine. So kind of a juxtaposition of um, old meets new. But uh, I have to start building it, so and the first thing to start out with is just a simple box made out of wood. So let's get started. Okay, so I've made my box out of wood. It's a half inch plywood, and I did use a rabbit joint, and as you can see, the uh, there's a little bit of an overlap, so I'm just uh, recessing these nails that were a little proud from the nail gun, and I'm gonna use a flush trimming bit and just a laminate trimmer or a laminate router. If you don't have one of these, they're great. They're really inexpensive and really um, kind of a smaller router uh, that you can um, do a lot of finer work with and just uh, a lot of fun to use. And so I'm just routing off that edge that's proud right there and then I'm gonna sand it down and uh, make the box all nice and smooth. And this is what the finished box looks like. Now I need to add some three quarter inch strips of plywood to create sort of a ledge that the LED strip lights can be mounted to. That way they can shine all the way up through the box and create that little LED neon light effect that would um, kind of highlight each control panel. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm going to put an opaque piece of uh, acrylic on the top. So I had some three quarter inch plywood strips left over from an HO model railroad uh, layout that I had. I had to disassemble it before we moved. So I'm just going to rip some of that stock down. Again, this is three quarter inch and I'm just using a micro jig and that is a Bosch foldable table saw. The, uh, my favorite table saw I think I've ever owned just because it's so lightweight and you can move it anywhere. Great product. Next, I'm just squaring up each edge of the board prior to cutting it to length. So I'm gonna measure out the length that I need, mark it with uh, a speed square, and then I'll cut the final dimension. Now here I'm just using my printout of my design as a reference and I'm making some marks that will allow me to drill some holes and I'm going to use a hole saw that will allow me to run wiring underneath this little framework that holds those LED lights. And the purpose behind that is I don't want any wires passing over the LED lights otherwise it's going to create a shadow on my cool neon looking outline. You don't need a drill press to drill holes into wood using a hole saw. You can certainly use a handheld drill, but this absolutely makes it a little more safer, a little more precise. You can um, be sure to get uh, right angles if you really needed that. 
I just happen to have one. Uh, that's what I'm going to use. Um, it just makes uh, everything a bit easier and safer in my opinion. And if you've seen a previous video that I've done where I did my uh, rocking chair 2.0, uh, I did nick myself uh, using a hole saw trying to cut a hole into PVC. But that was with a hand drill. So I've measured out where my first plywood strip is going to go to hold that LED strip light. And now what I'm doing is I'm just using a speed square to transfer my mark all the way around the plywood box. And the reason for this is when I go to nail uh, this thing off, I don't want my nail gun to miss the mark because uh, it's kind of a pain to pull those nails out. So I've sanded my first piece smooth. If you notice, there's an extra hole in this piece. It was already there. That's what I used to run wiring under my HO model railroad. Again, this is just scrap wood that I've been using. So I'm going to put a little wood glue on there, spread it around, and this is going to make it really strong. I'm trying to add strength to this box because I only used half inch plywood to make the box as a whole, and this is going to be a very heavy piece. So I really want it to be strong. So this is almost going to act like a little torsion box here. Now I'm just going to pop this in. And I'm going to use a speed square to make sure that it is completely perpendicular to the bottom of that box. This has to be pretty exact and you'll see why as this starts coming together. Because remember uh, we have those six individual control panels and each one is going to have its own Arduino controlling it uh, depending on how complex the features that I need. but. I really need to be able to um, mount each of those panels individually and then take them out later for maintenance if I need to. So, And I wanted as much clearance for all the electronics as possible. So as this comes together, you'll see the uh, method to my madness. So now I'm just using a pneumatic nail gun to nail this thing off and I'm using one inch brad nails and you can see I'm just using my speed square to double check that it's perfectly perpendicular and you see how nice that line is it gives me an immediate reference and you probably can't see it but I have a small mark that denotes the top of that little three-quarter inch plywood strip that's inside that way I don't shoot over it and now I'm just gonna flip it over and I'm using a tape measure as a guide between my two marks but leaving a little bit of space for the head of the nail gun just to drive a little brad in the back there for some extra stability. And this is really just so the um, to keep everything in alignment for the when the, the glue dries. The workhorse here, believe it or not, is the wood glue. Once this thing dries, that thing and none of these pieces are going anywhere. So now I'm just making the cross pieces here did a little dry fit and then just added some glue just like before and I'm going to continue this process throughout. And the final step to getting the basic box built is to finish it off by adding some le little ledger strips on the side. Remember that LED light needs to go around each individual panel and there are six of them. So it's a lot of little cuts and stuff, but I think it's going to be worth it in the end because it's really going to add to the look of this prop. All right, I'm just adding the final piece here. Gonna finish it off with a couple of nails and this box is done. And we're ready to move on to the next phase, which is adding those LED strip lights. 
So if you do like where I'm going with this and you want me to post more how-to videos and you're interested in seeing what the final product will look like, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.